Our next speaker is getting two graduate degrees at the same time. One is in mechanical engineering, the other is in public affairs. Uh, fittingly, she works in the Weber Energy Group, which is an institution here that sort of deals with you know, what's going on in terms of science and sustainability, and how do we make that happen and turn that into actual projects and see it succeed. So, Melissa Lott. use my hands when I talk. I am probably going to move entirely too much, so we're going to try this whole mic stand business and see if it works out. I have better told. All right, so I have two loves in my professional life. Professional. The first one, I love getting people together and taking tons of information and data and making it into something that means something and matters. I love taking data and saying, all right, I have this number, what the heck does it mean? This is a wonderful thing that I get to do in engineering and in policy. I get to take things in and say, what does this mean? I get to come to a point of understanding, which then lets me come to a point of knowledge. This lets me build a knowledge base and somehow contribute it to it. I love this. This is wonderful. My second love, my second love is a love of the electron. I love this subatomic particle. I love this thing. This thing. It travels to me over long distances, and it lets me do the things I want to do in my life. It lets me turn on my computer, which I will admit I'm addicted to. It lets me plug in my iPhone, which I'm also addicted to. Which these, these tools, it lets me use them in ways that I believe makes my life better. I love these two things. And I am so lucky because I get to work in a place where I take these two loves, and I combine them, working on something called a smart grid. So, I get the opportunity to explore with you how we can take data and we can turn it into knowledge in a system that is currently a black box, something we can't see into, and that's our electricity transmission grid. This grid is something that takes energy from somewhere and brings it to us, and that processes some kind of impacts, but we don't really understand what those impacts are. But the smart grid will allow us to do that. So the smart grid, in a transition to it, will allow us to know where our energy comes from and will allow us to decipher how our actions every single day, how when I got this morning and I hit the snooze bar on my phone, I think four times, how that action had a direct energy and environmental impact. Today, I couldn't tell you what kind of impact this had, but in the future, I'll be able to. And with that understanding and with that knowledge, I will be able to modify my behavior in response to whatever is important to me. Whatever my priorities are, I will be able to modify my so electricity. In the United States, like most of the world, we generate electricity in these big centralized power plants, and that power plant might burn coal or burn natural gas. It might use nuclear fission. It might use renewables, at least a little bit. It may use wind power or solar power or hydroelectric power. And these electrons, this electricity that's generated at these power plants, they travel over these massive wires. And they go through substations and distribution networks and all over the place, and they finally get to my house, which is honestly what I care about. It comes to my house, and it goes through this meter. I turn on my light in my house, and this meter counts one, two, three. That's the number of kilowatt hours that I'm using for whatever I'm doing in my house. Now, I'm lucky. I love to cook, and I have a gas range. But you know my oven, which I also love. Um, is electric. It's this beautiful electric thing. It has a built-in rotisserie. I can put a chicken in there. I can see it a few hours later. It's beautiful. I can put nothing on it and it tastes amazing. But I didn't really put nothing on it, right? I put electricity into it. I put electricity into my chicken. And this, this smart, or sorry, this meter right here, this counted that electricity. I will fully admit, I love electrons, I love electricity, I spend a large part of my life studying this stuff, but I couldn't tell you what my meter says on the outside of my house today. I know it's counting. I know that there's some guy or girl, I don't know, some person that comes within some general vicinity of my house every month or so and counts that number, writes it down, I get a bill, I pay it. I gotta admit, I haven't looked in the bill in a while because it automatically deducts through my checking account. My lights come on, I'm a happy camper, right? I mean, how many of y'all can tell me how many kilowatt hours 
of electricity. Okay, so let's see, we have delays in billing cycle. How many kilowatt -elect hours of electricity did you use in January? Okay, I'm gonna pretend that someone raised their hand and I'm like, wow, that is awesome. <laughs> like, that is so great. I think it's awesome that you did that. So let's say, oh, I use 900 kilowatt hours of electricity. Thank you, sir, ma'am. I'm glad, that's awesome that you know that. All right, so how many did you use on January 4th? Can your bill even tell you that? Now, how many kilowatt hours of electricity did I use when I made that amazing, beautiful golden rotisserie chicken? These are data that we don't have right now, but the cool thing is, we're gonna have them in my lifetime. We're gonna have them very soon, or at least we're gonna have the opportunity to tap into those data to be able to answer these questions. That's the smart grid. So the energy industry is going through a revolution. We've come to a point where people have said, our actions, well, first off, energy's in everything, right? I would be hard pressed to point at anything in this room that didn't have an energy input somewhere. If nothing else, this building was built, it was put together, and those people ate food that may have, you know, been harvested with a tractor, or, you know, more fundamentally, the materials that went in this building were brought here on a truck, on a car. Somehow there was an energy input into it. And people are realizing this. We depend on energy. And you know what? I'm spoiled. I want to continue depending on energy in my future. I want my electrons to keep coming, and I want to keep doing the things I want to do. I want that. But I also care about two big things, the environment and the economics of energy. I care about how much my energy is going to cost me in the long term. And I care about the environmental impacts that I have, both on my local area, I care about what I do to Austin, I care about what I do to Texas, I care about what I do to the United States, and honestly I care about what I do to the world because I'm realizing more and more over time that my actions, all of our actions, have impacts on the world. So people are realizing this. I'm not the only one. These are not, you know, I was not the first person to say, you know, energy is in everything. We're all realizing this, and the energy industry is going through a revolution because of that. And what they're saying is, all right, you know, in the case of the grid, in the case of the smart grid, data has been transferred in one direction. One direction. Where you have information coming into this meter meters counting your kilowatt hours of electricity that are coming into your house. And that's it. And you're getting billed for it. If someone said, hey, go cut your electricity use by 10%, how would you do that? Turn off all your lights. Okay, I hope that works. Okay, I'm going to get really hot in the middle of summer and I'm going to make my boyfriend very unhappy because it's very hot in my house today. Okay, we'll do that. But are you going to say 10%? I don't know. Well, you know what? I want to know. I want to know what my actions are getting me. I want to know what my actions are doing. And the smart grid enables me to do that. So we're getting to a point where we're going to have access to data, access to tons of data. I mean, think of Wikipedia on steroids. That's what we're going to have access to when it comes to our electricity grids. But let's not fool ourselves. I said, you know, my first love is taking things, it's taking data, and it's coming and using those data to get to a point of understanding and then to knowledge so then I can make like inform choices and have actions that are based on this knowledge and understanding instead of just, I don't know, wave my hands in the air, it seemed like a good idea today. And so we have these data, we have this desire to do something with them, and we need to bridge this gap. And we're already doing it today. And I would say that in the next, okay, I'm 27, I'm gonna make a bold statement. So in 10 to 15 years, I don't know if I can remember 15 years ago very clearly, it was 12. Yeah, okay, I can remember middle school. So in 10 to 15 years, in the same period of time from middle school to now, I'm gonna say that we're gonna have these translational tools to take us from these data to understanding, to knowledge, so that people can make choices. People can make informed choices. And I'm not just talking about me with two master's degrees, hopefully, in December. I'm talking about everyone who wants to understand it. You know what that means? That means a lot of different ways to translate and a lot of different ways to communicate information. So this is where I get really excited. I'm gonna try not to talk the best to it because when I get excited, I start talking just like in rapid, rapid fire. This, this middle gap here is where tons of opportunity sits. It's where innovation can occur and it's already occurring. And the innovation I'm talking about are things like smart meters. Well, you know what? We already have smart meters. So this guy that sits on the side of your house in Austin, 
that has been replaced by this guy. Well, something close to it. I was not able to get a picture of the actual meter. It was on the side of my house. I tried. It was raining the day I went out there. Um, this meter has the ability to say, right now, you are using this much electricity in your house. You are using it, and it also gives the ability to tie into it to a laptop. Put a laptop in your house and say, how much electricity am I using right now? And with other technology that exists today, I can tell you what piece of equipment in my house is using that bit of electricity. That is insanely powerful. I can then, from this, someday, in the not so distant future, tell you how much that is costing. And I can also, by having my computer, because honestly, I'm not going to sit around for eight hours and do this, though I might in the beginning. I can have my computer tell me how much that action is going to cost me. So I can say, hey, I just got home from work. You know what? I'm kind of running low on socks, and I need some of those tomorrow, so I'm going to go start the laundry. And then I'm going to go put it into the dryer. Well, you know what? That takes energy. And I can say, OK, I'm going to accomplish the same task. I'm going to do my laundry, but I'm going to save money by putting a delay on this load. Because I know that the trends are showing me that probably around this time at night, I'm going to pay less to do that same action. I saved myself money. I have not sacrificed anything. I'm doing what I want to do. I will have socks in the morning. And more importantly, I've made the choice to do it. Or at least that's something that I always want. It's something that I'm spoiled. I'm used to having a choice in the things that I do. I still have that choice. So we've got smart power meters in Austin. We have over 400,000 of these on the sides of our homes. I have one. I need to go study it more. So right now, it's kind of this box on the side of my house. In this, we also have educational tools. Now, this is something near and dear to my heart. This is something I created, so I figured I could put a picture up of it. It's a tool that says, OK, I have these data coming into my computer, and it tells me I'm using this kilowatt hour of electricity. Where the heck did it come from? Are there carbon emissions associated with it? Did it come from wind? Did it come from coal? You know, what's going on? Well, what do you mean came from wind? What do you mean kilowatt hour? Like, I, I, I haven't spent my life studying energy. I don't know what these things are. Educational tools, another big part of this gap, filling this gap, letting people learn in an interactive teaching and learning environment about what energy is. And then I'm talking about these programs. This is a huge, huge space. These programs that allow us to take all these data, translate them, and put them in whatever form we want to. Completely automated our system or not. So take the amount of electricity that we're using and make it mean something. Give us options to use less or use more. Optimize our system. And you can have your computer do all this. So I don't know if I can say legitimately this is one of the most exciting parts of this entire thing to me. I think innovation is great. I think the basic science and research and innovation, they're all wonderful things. I think that the best part to me is the awareness of science. So in the 60s and 70s, because this was before I was born, but it still gets me excited a few decades later, which says a lot about it, people got passionate about the space program. Non-scientists, scientists, people who maybe knew what, you know, how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, gotten the long division, and then said, I'm good. They got excited about the space program. You know, everyone wanted to be an astronaut. I was born, you know, in the early 80s, and I still thought being an astronaut was cool. I had astronaut Barbie. I never had the really cute one with the dress. I had astronaut Barbie and veterinarian Barbie and all these cool things. And astronaut Barbie was my favorite. She had the best little helmet, this, you know, super crunchy kind of silver suit. It was amazing. This is doing the same thing that we did with the space program in the 60s and 70s. This is making data apply to people's lives, and it's making science accessible to people. It's allowing people to take science and dive into it as deep as they want to, or as shallow as they want to, to say, these are my personal priorities, these are the things I care about, this is how far I want to dive, and go there. And so what does it matter? Why does this matter? Well, I've said it. Economics, environment, making people passionate about science. And it also, in my opinion, will be a key tool, a necessary tool, in enabling us to go to a sustainable energy future. If you can't, people don't understand what their actions are doing, how can they change them in a way, in a collective way, towards something sustainable for the future? How can they do it? I argue that they can't. 
And if they manage to, man, we got lucky. So that's my talk. Thank you for listening.